Welcome to Wednesday, June 10th, 2020. Thanks for watching the Day Weather Podcast and thanks for listening on in. Summer reboot. Well, after some snow and unseasonably cold, stormy weather, we're going to reboot summer, get it started again. Still a little on the cool side today, but warming up compared to yesterday. Back to summertime temperatures for Thursday, Friday, and into the weekend. We don't see too much shower and thunderstorm activity over the next three days. Just a little bit of it, but a better chance that thunderstorms will be developing in the region this weekend into early next week. It will be a little bit cooler for the northern Rockies Sunday and Monday. A lot of that, though, staying up to the north. La Nina continues to come on. I think we're feeling the effects of La Nina already with some of the dryness in parts of the southern and central high plains and some parts of the Rockies. We did see some great moisture this week, but there are still areas that need more. Let's take a look at where the current jet stream pattern is right now. We have a high pressure ridge off the west coast, and that's going to be coming on in right here. This high pressure ridge is going to expand eastward in the coming days. This was the nasty guy right here that made for so much wintry weather, so much wind. Boy, the wind was awful in many areas yesterday, and we're now looking at that system moving away. It was a good producer of precipitation, though. The silver lining is Many areas got some really good moisture, but we need more. As we get into Friday morning, high pressure gets going right over the southern Rockies, so the clockwise spin will bring warm air out of the deserts. So we're going to have a nice warm up for this region, but look at this guy. We got another Pacific trough. He's going to head up this way by Sunday and Monday, and this is by Sunday afternoon. So Montana, the Pacific Northwest, this area right here, will see a cool down Sunday and Monday with some shower and thunderstorm activity for the I-25, I-70 corridor areas of Colorado and Point South. There really won't be much of an impact from this other than some increasing wind Sunday into Monday. By next Tuesday, high pressure reestablishes itself, so we're going to warm up again. But notice we continue to have these Pacific troughs up here the Pacific is still throwing stuff at us here, even through the last two weeks of June. So this is still going to be causing some ups and downs. By late next week and by next weekend, this is the weekend of Saturday, the 20th and 21st of June, we're likely going to see the high pressure ridge shift a little bit more to the east here. This will make it a little cooler, and this probably means showers and thunderstorms increasing in the region by late next week and by next weekend. This is the forecasted precipitation through Tuesday morning. You can see we've got some activity over New Mexico into the parts of the high plains and Rockies. This is basically the uptick in thunderstorm activity this weekend, mainly your afternoon stuff. A little bit more wet out here in the Pacific Northwest and the northern Rockies and the northern plains with that trough coming in Sunday and Monday. Let's take a look at the updated sea surface temperatures. This is the change in sea surface temperatures since April 7th to June 7th. Wherever you see blue, sea surface temperatures have gotten colder. Green represents in yellow where the sea surface temperatures have warmed up. The equatorial region is really the key. That's where the energy is. That's where so much of our climate is driven by, is near that equator in the Pacific. And you can see it's really starting to cool off. We continue to see hints that La Nina is getting better and better established. The heat content between 100 west longitude and 180 degrees shows that from the sea surface below the surface of the water, it has really cooled off. So it is going to be really hard to reverse the La Nina that's developing. It's very weak. We could barely even call it La Nina, but boy, it's really showing up because they tend to really come to fruition in the fall and the winter when that's when they get the strongest. This is the calculated soil moisture change since March 31st. And I do think we're feeling the effects of La Nina right now. The colder the sea surface temperatures are in the subtropical Pacific, the less water is available to make it rain and make it snow. And the Western High Plains, the Central and the Southern Rockies, this area right here, is most susceptible to La Nina's. When we get into La Nina's, we tend to go dry or get drier. And I think some of the pockets of dryness that we've seen develop this spring, especially here, we can talk about 
the beginnings of the La Nina probably having an influence. This is the long range sea surface temperature forecast for October through December. And you can see it's well established across the subtropical Pacific. When this area is cool, there's less water vapor in the air to come into the United States, the Western United States in particular. And there's lots of other things that happen. We'll continue to update you on La Nina throughout the summer. Sunspots, we have one. This came in a few days ago. This is one of the bigger sunspots we've seen in a long, long time. The sun is still in its solar minimum, but we are seeing signs of more activity, which we should. The solar minimum was expected to bottom out April, May 2020 with some increase in sunspot activity. It's only one, but it's one of the bigger ones. So I think the sun's going to start to get out of its slumber. Although the real question is, how much out of its slumber is it going to get? Thanks for listening and watching the Day Weather Podcast. We'll talk to you on Thursday.